Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, Super Ghouls Ghosts, where we're about to start the second run. Right, if you never played Super Ghouls and Ghosts before, then Ghouls and Ghosts basically has two. T you have to go through Ghouls and Ghosts two games. This is basically the same as it was before. You have to beat. You got to beat the Ghouls. You got to beat the game twice, and then you got to do it this time. But this time, we have to do this with the Goddess's bracelet. Yeah. And guess what? The difficulty goes up. So, what I'm going to be doing for from now until say the ending of the game is we're going to be we're going to be using the goddess bracelet and actually get to the end. Because I kind of thought it was a bit simple getting to the getting to everything the first time. That was the surprise all along. Is that, you know, is that everything gets harder and all their weapons. If you touch a weapon, you have to wait five chests to get it. And if you lose the uh, and if you lose the armor, oh boy, if you lose the armor or die or something or any or any case, you have to do the game again. You have to. A little bit of a surprise, but uh, let's put it this way: there's a reason why many people think this game is a bit too, gets a bit difficult. But then again, you think about it, this is basically standard Capcom difficulty. Everything is hard. It's not, it's not easy, it's just hard. So anyway, we're going to be going through the graveyard, and uh, quite a few levels that we missed the last time. So this is the uh, dead place, which is interesting level title as it is. So we'll go for the graveyard. All the places no name, and we're moving on to the coast area. As you may have known, the coast area is... Ooh, difficult! Ooh! Close, very close. If that actually had happened, I would have lost the life and lost the ability. Basically, have the goddess bracelet! That's it. Also, and pointing into this out as well, there are now traps. So, your objective, you're basically now got to avoid all the chests. Which is not easy, really. And also, the difficult. Ooh, that was a close one there! So yeah, we now we are now halfway through the level. Welcome to the Forest of Fear. Not much of a title, but you get the basic idea. You, everyone gets the basic idea there, as it were. It's not that difficult. I mean, technically, it's still the only thing that's hard is just basically enemy placements and all that stuff. It's just you have to do this again. But you have a but you you got the goddess bracelet or the weapon that we got here is a close range weapon, which means you can't rely on range anymore. Which is probably where the difficulty stacks up. And it really does get a bit tricky. As it were, get to it, getting down to it. Do it to that, now we're heading off towards our first boss. The first boss again, the Cockatrice. We gotta fight in close range now, and he's hard. As you can tell, the the, the um the enemy plate the enemy thingy just spikes up, and the difficulty taking out the death wig as well, which is not much. He still falls several weapons later. Moving on to the next level. On to our on to the Death Sea. Oh, basically we're entering the the ghost ship. Basically entering the wrecks known as the ghost. As the ship shipwrecks, or the ghost ships, or something. I'm just gonna have to look this up real quick. I know where we are. It's the. It's basically a ship. It's basically a ship. It's a shipyard, I think. I believe it is. I have to look up the level placement because believe me, this is still the same as it was back there. The ghosts are assholes now. More more ghosts spawn. That's definitely a harder thing. I uh, try to do this bit, which is. Not too hard. It does climb up the waters because the water goes up. Some of these, some of these treasure chests are dead. Oh, that was close. Ooh, I remember how difficult that bit was. Okay, level two. Of the, oh yeah, this is the level two. is called the Rotting Sea. The other one, so yeah, graveyard of ships, and then the other one, then the one that's coming up there is the Sea of Despair, which then leads to the underworld. Um, I know this is not going to be much, and I 
do no I'm dodging a lot of things here I don't want to okay, I don't want to make anyone panic but believe me I don't want to do that because Jesus fuck the enemies are getting dickish with their placements and stuff I'm not interested I'm not gonna get the item let's go get let's go on to the uh, halfway point so here we go with the sea of despair so yeah the first one was of course the um, the first ones were freaking sea sea for taking on ghouls and mimics of the graveyard ships and then we're going into the sea of despair which is between the human world and the Makai and the demon realm aka the Makai realm and the connection this game has to the to a previous title was also a connection to uh, Gargoyle's quest as well because the uh, final boss for well, one of the final boss or the boss that you know thing he was worried by was Lucifer who was in who was in Gargoyle's Quest 1 as a minor character but they linked him to freaking ghouls and ghosts because in the arcade version aka the sequel to the NES version he killed pretty killed a lot of people and Princess Prin Prin and and yet do the game like twice so he, he kind of have to do the game twice is it happy with this one the only time that ghouls and ghosts has never shown a ever beat everything twice thing is the more interesting ghouls and ghosts period and that is a and that was of course the um the fir the uh you the PSP version ultimate ghouls and ghosts that's the only bloody interesting time I've ever seen because it was more it was more RPG ish elements that you had to go back to certain levels collect things and collect certain armors. I mean, yeah, if you want me to perfectly honest, this is technically, I would say, the, uh... If you never played a game like this, I would say that most cap the Ghouls and Ghosts series are Dark Soul, are the Dark Souls of platformers. Don't quote me on that one. They are potentially Dark Souls. You get hit once, you get hit once, you get once if you wear armor, you die instantaneously. I think that's where a lot of cat call people love that's one. That's probably one of the reasons why I think the game, you know didn't do so well is because, well, you know, the PSP technically in the Western Shores was a, was a dying console whilst in Japan it was a thriving, whilst in Japan it fried because of Monster Hunter, an unexpected Capcom series that revitalized many things and kept the PSP alive in Japan, kept the uh, Vita alive, Cur the Vita is currently alive in Japan because of this. Well, there's a lot of games here. So we'll point this out. Anyway, moving on. I uh, believe we'll be going up against the Storm Cesaris. Which is coming up for a boss. Storm Cesaris for the boss coming up, and it's a bit, you know, difficult. Yeah, Storm Cesaris. Which is a thing. We haven't got to the boss yet. I mean, we have seen him. We beat him. It's the second boss that has balanced a tornado. Storm Cesaris. Yes, I do a say to the rage of this game with the P GBA. It still has the uh, PSP slowdown, but anyway. We have nearly two minutes to defeat the Storm Cesaurus using this difficulty. And, um, well, you know, the fact that we have a short range weapon that can only do damage to a certain level, like so. Well, it destroys all the projectiles, but that's really about it. And uh, that that that's going to be the huge thing about this game is just that. Anyway, I might take a look at the PSP. I might take a look at Ultimate Ghosts Ghost, actually, because a lot of PSP tiles I can actually play. Well, that was quick. I wasn't expecting to take him out long range, but there you go. And uh, just because we can actually move on to the next level. Moving on to level three, the Vermilion Horror. As you know, before the Vermilion Horror starts off with the with basically known as the Chamber of Fire. Let's see if I got this right. Did I get the Chamber of Fire? Yeah, the Crucible of Flame, and then the Towers of Molten Steel. That's level three for a nutshell. Except it's a lot harder this time. You have to avoid picking up items and avoid the mini, the mini firebrand, the mini firebrands that are there. Firebrand has his own minions. Gotta avoid those. Luckily, I think I've got the right balance. 
or he's a bit too short, or he just doesn't give a shit about the flame. There you go, we're going to take him out long distance, because that fireball cuts through everything. So, jump through that. Head down here. Avoid the mini fires. Mini brands. As you can see, there's plenty of reasons why you should hate this game. All because it gives you unfair advantage. Give you close range, takes you to that. So yeah, time for the platforms of the Crucible of... Time for the Molten Platforms. These are... These are kind, this is still an interesting gameplay mechanic. On towards the uh, blood, sp blood conveyor belts. Which is still interesting. And one. And fun. Head down towards here. Head there. Towards that. Jump towards here. Heading over towards the uh, heading towards the uh, first instance of facing the Red Amber Ace, which is this chappy here. Oh, of course, he dies instantaneously to two close ones. Moving on to the Towers of Molten Steel. This is a this is the connector that leads to the next level, and it's these rotating platforms. I still think this is a cool idea. I mean, if you look carefully, you can actually technically see most of the underworld. You're going through, every time Arthur comes to the Makai Realm, he cuts through a, a different segment. He's, I'm guessing every time they, uh, he comes here, it's a little bit different to what you're facing. Although most of the time, Arthur goes up, most of the time in, uh, in Arthur's instances, it's always, the fir it's always the first level. It's always the first level. It's just that. Right, we head towards that, and then there's items here. It's Jester, not good. Keep going to the right. Take out the statues, because you know they'll they'll all they all they will they will launch you know projectiles that'll try and hit you. So that's basically the idea here. Moving towards the right, as it were, like so. That was a close one. I thought it was I thought I got hit. Avoid the la avoid the lance for now. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I might as well just. Well, we're heading towards the uh, the worm, which is the which is the uh, the death worm, which is the boss. It was a close encounter last time, but not this one. It's the death. Cr they call it the death crawler, but it's called a worm in this version. I think I'll just call it as it as it is. We had we've we've had the freaking cockatrice. We had the freaking um, we had the freaking ghouls. We had the de the ser the serbatus, and now we're facing off against the death carrier, aka the death worm. So is this difficult as a boss? Yeah, you can't jump into him. That's true. You just have to modify your attack pattern to make sure he does that. That's work. Keep going. Because, uh, we could, yeah, I'm clipping the fucking ceiling. I am, I'm not sure you're supposed to fucking do that, but I'm clipping the boss. I'm also taking absorption things like a boss, and I believe he's dead next hit. Oh, he's close. Die, there you go. And that's the level. Moving on to the ghoul's stomach. See you all next time. Bye for now. Fucking Windows 10.